Welcome to part three of our web design series in HTML. And in our previous lesson, we looked at how we can structure our web page and we can just get it set up. Now we're going to actually put content onto our web page using special tags that we learn about paragraphs and headings and stuff like that. So let's start with the body. In the body, that's where all the visible content's going to go that we want to display in our web page. So if, for example, let's say we've got a P tag. Now that's a new tag that we're learning about and that represents the paragraph. So whatever your paragraph is, you would put that in between a p tag and a closing p tag so something like that so that would make a separate paragraph so that's like the new tag that we've learned the paragraph tag it's very easy to remember p tag paragraph tag the other tags we're going to learn about is what happens if i want like a nice little heading like a main heading in my web page i want to make it highlighted like different to the actual text now they've got built-in heading tags for us and that the, the main heading tag is called an h1 tag and so I will apply the H1 tag in front of the main heading and then I will close it at the end of the main the main heading. So that's a close H1 tag. Now if you have a subheading, so there's the main heading. If we have a subheading, so this is not a second main heading, this is a, a, a subheading of the main heading. So it's like a different level, level two kind of thing. Now how do we, we want it to be slightly different, slightly smaller than maybe the main heading, but it still needs to be highlighted different to your normal text. Well, luckily for us, there's also an H2 tag, which is like for a subheading. And so we have the H2 tag and we close the H2 tag at the end of the subheading. And well, what happens if we've got a sub subheading or like a level three heading? Well, you guessed it, there's an H3 tag. We can use the H3 tag. In fact, there's even an H4 tag for like a sub sub subheading or an H5 tag. It goes all the way up to H6. So you can have different levels of headings. Um, they get smaller and less pronounced as you go further down. So your main headings are H1s and then your subheadings and sub subheadings and so on will go down that list. So we've got access to all of those different types of headings. So let's go apply it to our web page. So here we've got the page that we had from the last lesson. So let's say I'm going to, I'm in my body because that's where all the content is that's going to be visible. And I want to type in, hey, I'm going to type in here, uh, Mr. Long Education. Okay, so that's going to be like a heading. And then underneath it somewhere, I'm going to say, welcome to my web page on HTML. Okay, so let's say that's going to be a paragraph that's under the heading. Now, if I don't apply any tags, I'll just leave it like it is. I just want to show you what it looks like. So if we save it, remember, always save. You can see nothing's actually changed. You have to first save, and then you need to refresh. Now we can see that actual content is in our web page, but as you see, it's not the way we want it. We've got our heading over there, and that even though we pressed enter, it doesn't actually take that enter in. It just puts everything next to each other. That's why it's important to specify that this is a paragraph. So we're going to put this in a paragraph tag, and we will close the paragraph tag there. Okay, obviously we need a little bit more information in our paragraph, but that, that separates it from the heading. So if I save it now, now you can see it separates it onto a new line. That's a lot better. And we want this Mr. Long, we want it to be a little bit more highlighted, a little bit more bold. So we're going to actually put that in an H1 tag. And then right at the end, we're going to apply the close H1 tag. And so we're going to click save. And then we're going to refresh. And there we go. You can see the difference in that particular heading from the text. And as I said, there are lots of other examples of it. I'm actually just for interest sake, just going to show you just a couple of them. So if I do that again, but in this case, underneath it, we're going to apply the H2 tag. Let's just see what it looks like. Save and let's refresh. And you can see that second heading is a lot smaller. We can go all the way up to H6. So let's see what an H6 looks like. So you can go H3, H4, H5, and there you can see it's quite small. So, so you've got these different subheadings, but you can see it's still bold and stuff like that. So we don't actually want that though. So there we go. So there we got a nice little um, heading. So let's save that. I want to get rid of it. Let's save. Boom. There we go. That looks a lot better. And there's our H1, our heading, and there's our paragraph. Now I'm going to add some more text and we're going to add some more changes to this document. So some other tags that we're going to learn about is let's say we've got some text in our body and we want to highlight it a little bit more, not make it a heading, but we want to highlight it in, in a word document. You would normally bold that. So if you want to bold text, then you, you can just use the B tag, the B for bold. So you apply the bold tag and there's the opening bold tag and there's the closing bold tag. Whatever's between those two tags will then become bolder. Okay. So that's how you can bold text. Now, another option, would be what happens if we want to, I don't know, 
you want to change it to italics. Now, as you guessed, there's an R tag which will change it to italics. So you will have the opening R tag and then the closing R tag, and that will apply whatever's between those two tags. It doesn't have to be one word. It could be lots of lots of uh, text. But whatever's between those two R tags will then be changed to italics. And then the last one, well, maybe you want to underline some text. And so if there's a B tag and a R tag, then you can guess it, there must be a U tag, and that's for underline. So if we say open U, and then at the end we close the U tag, whatever's between those two tags will then become underlined. Okay, so those are the different types of tags that we can add to our paragraphs to add some extra formatting. But just a little, little tip here, before we go to the example, sometimes you want to apply lots of these to the same text, like bold, italics, and underline. So to use them correctly, I just want to show you this quickly. So in maths, you might recognize those type of brackets. You've got like square brackets and curly brackets and round brackets. Now, if I did this at the other end, you would go, hey, hey, hey something's not right here. That doesn't look right. And it doesn't, it isn't right because um, it's in the, it's been closed in the wrong order. You should, whatever the last bracket that you opened, it should be the first one that you close. So it should look something more like that. So the round brackets are closed first, then the curly brackets, and then the square brackets. That looks a lot better. Now you should apply the same type of technique to your tags. If you're applying multiple tags to the same text or same parts of your document, you should do the same thing. So you would have the bold tag, for example, um, and so you would close the bold tag last if you've got multiple tags. So let's say I want to make it bold and italics. So you would do it like that. So And then you would underline it maybe as well. So you first open the bold, then you open the italics, then you open the underline. And then whichever was the one that you last opened, in this case, the underline is the one you closed first. Um, you can do these in any order. It doesn't matter what order you do them in. As long as when you are closing the tags that you close them in the correct order. Now, if you do it in the wrong order, your browser might just do it properly anyway and you might not notice it. But this is better style. It's a better style to make sure that you have your tags in the right closing order. So let's go back to our page. I added a bit more text to my paragraph. And so let's say I want to highlight the particular word um, HTML. I want to make it bold. So in front of the word bold, I will put a B tag. And then at the end, I will close the B tag. So there we go. And then we, you can't see it there. Why? Because we haven't saved and we need to refresh. And there you can see that HTML tag, that HTML part is now bold. Um, and let's say I want to make the following text underlined. So I'm going to put, hey, I'm going to put that a u tag there and then at the end of the word uh grade 12 i'm going to close the u tag now remember what i taught you when you click on a tag and it goes purple then you know that you've closed correctly if you've made a mistake and you click on a tag and it doesn't go purple then you know you haven't closed it properly so make sure that you're always checking that you close them properly so if i apply the underline tag over there so let's save it watch the text over there boom there we go we can see it's now nice and aligned and i also want to make it italics so let's put the italic tag there. Now remember what I just taught you when you uh, italic one was the last one that we opened. So therefore we should not close it there. No, no, no. Close it first. Then you close the underline tag. So that's what it should look like if you've got multiple tags on a particular text. So let's look how it gets flattened a little bit. Look, Go to the side of it. There we go. So there we go. So you can see all those little tags being applied. And so that's what you can do to your document. And you can go edit your pages, make a couple more paragraphs, bold and italics, and make things. And you can make a really nice web page. So go have fun. Make some web pages. For more HTML videos, go to our YouTube channel, click on the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. Then go to the playlist. There you should find the HTML links. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.